These Amtrak trains are older than Amtrak, and if you want to ride one for yourself, you better hurry. The Acela is Amtrak's flagship train, providing fast service on the electrified Northeast Corridor between Boston, New York, and Washington, D.C. Acela trains provide extra comfort and they reach a top speed of 150 miles per hour. The current train sets date back to the year 2000. Maybe, hopefully, probably later this year we'll be able to ride the new generation of Acelas. We'll see. But what about before 2000? What was the fastest train in the Northeast of the last century? Let me introduce you to the Metroliner. This was a limited stop service between New York and Washington, D.C. that required passengers to pay a surcharge. Experienced travelers are finding out there's only one carrier to Washington that will reserve a comfortable seat, provide room to stretch out, offers meals at a real dining table, has 11 departures every working day, costs only $50 one way, and takes as little as 2 hours and 49 civilized minutes. Amtrak's Metroliner service. Service ran from 1969 to 2006, briefly overlapping with the Acela. But wait a minute, 1969? Didn't Amtrak begin operations in 1971? That's right, they did. But the Metroliner predates Amtrak. See, the line from New York down to Washington was owned by the Pennsylvania Railroad. In 1966, just a few years after Japan's first Shinkansen line had entered service, the Penzi, with help from the federal government, ordered a fleet of electric multiple units from the Bud Company. These two-car trains were capable of 160 miles per hour, but in reality, they did not run faster than 120 miles per hour. SEPTA in Philadelphia also ordered several sets, which they leased to the Pennsylvania Railroad for service between Philadelphia and Harrisburg. The railroad took the metro liners very seriously. At several major stations along the line, they built high-level platforms to facilitate level boarding with the new cars. But by the time the Bud Metro Liners entered service in 1969, the Pennsylvania Railroad had merged into Penn Central. Penn Central began running the metro liners and ran them for two years, managing to reduce travel time between New York and DC to two and a half hours. In 1971, upon Amtrak's inception, Amtrak took over the Metroliner service. However, the Metroliners proved to be everything but reliable. The electric motors failed and were causing problems all the time. Large chunks of the fleet would be out of service at any given moment, and ridership was suffering because of it. By 1978, Amtrak was using locomotive hauled trains on Metroliner services instead. The Amfleet cars had recently been introduced. Amfleets were also built by Bud, with very similar specifications, just no electric motors. So the last motorized Metroliner ran in 1984, although services to Harrisburg did continue until 1988. Their reign was short-lived. But that's not the end of the story. Though the electronics were bad, as unpowered trains, they were sturdy and reliable. Some were converted into track geometry cars or experimental trains. Several more were sent to Michigan, where they served as unmotorized passenger cars, and one snack car, initially numbered 863, was renumbered to 9800 and converted into a luxury lounge car. It is still in service today. On the day that I saw it, it was getting ready to travel from Washington, D.C. to Philadelphia. In Philly, it would turn around and pick up the Cleveland Cavaliers basketball team. The Cavaliers had rented the car to travel to D.C., where they would be playing the Wizards that weekend. But given how similar the Metro Liners are to Amfleet, the majority of the cars were converted to cab cars. I have an explainer video going into more detail about how cab cars work, but basically it's an unpowered car with driving controls. 
It allows the engineer to drive the train even when the locomotive is at the back, making it much simpler to turn trains around. These Metroliner cab cars entered service in 1988. They have been used all across the country, but most recently they've been used on the Hartford Line in Connecticut and the Keystone service in Pennsylvania. Except once a week, one cab car makes its way down to Washington. Specifically, on Sundays, it's on Northeast Regional 121 and then back to New York on the 122. And that's what we're going to ride today. So the Metro liners that have been converted to cab cars, normally they operate on the Keystone service, which runs between New York City and Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. But once a week on Sundays, one of those Keystone sets isn't being used on the Keystone, so Amtrak uses it on the Northeast Regional. So I'm at BWI Airport Station. It's the Amtrak and Mark Station for Baltimore Washington International Airport. And in a few minutes, Amtrak train 121, the Northeast Regional, We'll stop here and pick up passengers headed to Washington, D.C. At the very front of that train, we should see a converted Metroliner. This is the last call for Amtrak Northeast Regional Train 121 en route to Washington with intermediate stops. We want to sit in the front, so we have to run a little bit. Hey, Lindsay. So this is both of our first time on a Metroliner cab car. Is it any different than an M fleet? No. <laughs> so what's different? Well, the safety information card says cab car. That's pretty cool. Other than that, really not much. They've been made to look pretty much identical to the M fleet cars. Same seats, albeit a little bit broken. And the seats come with reading lights, power sockets, Even the bathrooms have no noticeable differences. We did think that maybe the baggage racks were slightly different than on Amfleet, but maybe we were just imagining things. <laughs> there is one huge difference though. If you walk all the way to the front of the car, there's the engineer's cab. All the Amtrak trains you can ride, it is very rare to be able to look out the front of the train, but there is a little former window here, so I enjoyed looking out over the tracks of the Northeast Corridor while the engineer brought us home to Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, the and final station is now coming up on the Charlie will be Washington Union Station. Please take the time to check the seating area for all your personal belongings. Not the best of you while the train is in motion. Once again, the next station stop coming up is Washington Union Station. Thank you. 
Now I mentioned a few times that your chances to ride the Metroliner cab cars are running out. That's because they're old. They're pushing 55, which is older than Amtrak itself. And Amtrak is in the process of replacing them. They have been converting the HHP-8 locomotive, also known as the Hippo, into non-powered control units. The HHP-8s actually have a very similar history where they were introduced as fast inner city trains, but the electronics were so bad that they were pulled out of service earlier. Now Amtrak is hoping that these HHP-C cab cars will replace the Metroliner cab cars, and they've begun testing them. I'm not sure when the Metroliners will be pulled out of service. It could be this year, it could be in a couple of years, but if you want to ride them, I wouldn't wait. Personal belongings and make your way towards this exit. Please do not stand in the vestibule while the train is in motion. Once again, it's very dangerous. Please stay inside the, please stay inside the car. Do not stand inside the vestibule while the train is in motion. Once again, the next station stop coming up is watching the station. Lindsay as well as my other friends with me today. Thank you for indulging me and in coming out to BWI on a Sunday. <laughs> All right, thank you Metroliner for bringing us back to DC. We're gonna go grab some lunch. So what better place for lunch than Raising Cane's? This opened back in January here at Union Station. I've had Cane's before. It's, it's fast food chicken, it's pretty good. Um, but when the DC location opened here in the station, the lines were so long. So it's a few months later now, there's not as long of a line anymore. So it's like now it's time to introduce our friends to Raising Canes. Thank you so much for watching today. If you have the opportunity to pay a last tribute to the Metroliner, I definitely encourage you to do so. But regardless of that, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. I have much more content like this coming and you won't want to miss it. We'll see you next time.